All right. Well, anyway, thank you for coming to the very first of a series of debates entitled Neuroscience and. Uh, this first debate is going to be entirely in English. Uh, the, the, language, the official language of the Academia Europea, who's one of the, of the entities that collaborate uh, in the organization. And uh, in the little piece of paper, in the little brochure that you have, you will see that there are three more debates uh, about neuroscience and something else. Um, this is a very, uh, we are a very modest organization, but we, I just realized that we have a lot of sponsors. Uh, this is um, organized by the Genomic Regulation Center and the uh, Institut d'Estudis Catalans, here where we are um, all meeting, and the uh, Institut de Cultura de Barcelona. And it has the support of the Barcelona Knowledge Hub of the Academia Europea, and the academic director of the Barcelona Knowledge Hub. Um, also with the collaboration of the, of the Logos Group, uh, research group in logic, language, and cognition. The, so the, the Spanish Society of Neuroscience, the Spanish Society of Neurology, the Catalan Society of Biology of the Institut d'Estudis Catalans, and the Brain Awareness Week. So anyway, welcome here. Uh, this is the first, as I say, this is the first of a series, and we hope that we, we will have fun. And what I, we're now going to do is that Mara Dearson is going to just, without further ado, go ahead and introduce our speakers. Thank you. So good evening. Mm, as Genova said, my name is Mara Dearson. I lead a, a neurobiology research group in the systems biology program of the Center for Genomic Regulation here in Barcelona. And uh, I am here uh, in my capacity as coordinator of the Brain Awareness Week and the Spanish Neuroscience and president of the Spanish Neuroscience Society. So today's debate about neuroscience and economy is part of the Brain Awareness Week program that we are holding, that we are celebrating here in Barcelona and in the rest of Spain and in 87 more countries. Um, we have uh, several things this week. Tomorrow we have also an conference in uh, L'Hospitalet, so for everybody that would like to come, it's called the Brain Hackers, and you will learn about how your brain can be hacked by different means. So, but today we will speak about the relationship of you know, science and economy. And uh, at first glance, a neuroscientist in the business school may sound like a, an odd fit, let's say so. But, in fact, the economists have been paying more and more attention in the last years to how the brain works. And, uh, of course, the first thing that you could ask is how and why is neuroscience implicated in the research of the economists? And, um, well, you may have heard about game theory and the behavioral economics, but the term neuroeconomics, of course, is something kind of revolutionary. In fact, we could define it as an innovative research program that brings findings and modeling tools from you know, science, economy, psychology, to try to answer questions about human choice behavior, about decision making. And, uh, we should not think about neuroeconomics as, well, something um, kind of complementary to other disciplines. It is in itself a discipline, and in fact, many leading universities have now their own labs or their own centers devoted to this discipline. And you may ask, labs? Why labs? <laughs> in fact, here we have one of the first person that did her PhD in experimental economics. So, we need labs, the neuroeconomists need labs, because they need to control the conditions under the subjects are making decisions. And they need to control them to be able to find the, let's say, the decision-making structures and then be able to, to correlate them with how the brain is working when these decisions are being taken. So, Questions that, and this is something that we will ask afterwards, that uh, neuroeconomy may help to solve, 
are things like how decisions are taken in the economic field. Uh, why do you make poor financial decisions? Wouldn't you love to know why do you make these poor financial decisions? I would love to know that. So we can ask them afterwards. Um, maybe they will not answer. <laughs> and of course, um, uh, could the decision, for example, making process of CEOs when they merge two companies be like in the black box of rationality, or are they simply like this impulsive flow of uh, feeling and gut? Okay, so we don't know which, which will be the questions uh, that, uh, that neuroeconomy will be able to answer, but uh, by now the contribution of, uh, of uh, this new discipline to many fields, not only to, to the economic field, but also uh, to fields like in decision making, deterministic theories about choice, evolution, etc., are very, very important. And today we have three absolutely brilliant speakers with us. We are very lucky to have here Arkady Navarro, Rosmarina Gell, and Antonio Cabrales. And uh, we will start with three short presentations and then uh, we will open the debate to all of you, so you will be able to ask all the things you would like to know and you never dare to ask about neuroeconomics. Uh, but we will start first with Arkady Navarro. So uh, Arkady uh, did his undergraduate and uh, studied in the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Then he quit academy for a while and he returned as a postdoc in, the, in Edinburgh, in the University of Edinburgh. He joined the uh, University Pompeu Fabra in 2002 as a Ramonica Hall researcher and then he was appointed as an ICREA research professor uh, at the UPF. He is uh, leading a research group in evolutionary genomics and his interest is in, in evolution and how uh, these processes, such as natural selection, cooperation, and combination, um, are helping us to understand how evolution shaped our genomes and led to things like biodiversity. So, Arkady, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm also stuffing in there. Okay, so thanks very much for being here. Uh, I'm not going to start with a formal talk, what I'll do is I'll start with a questionnaire. And you've got a pencil already. You've got a questionnaire now. Uh, only problem is that I was not aware that this was in English, so the questionnaire is in Catalan. But I'll do my best, OK? Um, some of you, if you are by training or by trade, you are economists or new economists or something, will find what I will explain really trivial. But here you have a sheet of paper. I, I, don't know, I never know if I'm pronouncing shit well, but I do my best. Um, and you'll have soon, once everyone has one copy, you'll have a few answers, a few questions to answer. Let me, let me start, before I show any slides, by guiding you through the process of answering these questions. There's two of them. And the first set up, the, uh, you, by the way, you shouldn't be looking at your partners. This is like an exam at universities or schools. This is for you to answer alone, okay? <laughs> we need more copies. So, uh, some copies, I hope, are on their, on their we, way. We read co some copies are on their way. Uh, if, if they, if they don't arrive here, but I, you, don't, you don't answer it yet. Let me start explaining. Uh, first question. You are playing a game, so to speak, and the game is for real money. Uh, this is something that, by the way, happens. I'm not going to distribute any money, but I should to make this thing real, as it happens in the labs. In the game, what you've got is a decision to make. It's a single game, but you play, you can play in two roles, and today we're going to play both of them. First, first case, you, you you, as an individual, has been, have been paired with someone else in the planet, and you play through a computer. And me, the experimenter, tells you, well, folks, we've got 10 euros here. And you have to split them. 
you, as a player, are going to make a proposal about how to split these 10 euros. And now the other person will either accept or reject that proposal. Notice that this person is something you don't know. You will never know who this person is. You will not know whether it is your brother-in-law whom you hate or whether he is, he is your kid whom you love. It's an anonymous person. You propose how to split. This person accepts or rejects. If this person accepts your offer, then you really do split the money. And money is given to you in the proportion you decided. If the person rejects the money, then both of you lose the money. So it works like this. Let's imagine 10 euros. Uh, I can say, uh, say five for me, five for you. Or I can say eight for me, two for you. Or I can say 10 for me, zero for you, right? What I ask you to answer in this first question is what offer you make? How much for you? How much for the other person? Would you please write this down without showing the others? Okay. Everybody has one now? But me and Okay, perfect. Second thing, second thing, second question. Now you are put in the other role. You are paired with someone else. A different person, not the other same person whom you uh, played before, whom with you played before, or whoever, however this is pronounced. You are paired, and you now are in the position of the person who takes the decision. This person will make you, this other player will make you an offer, and you decide whether you accept it or not. Okay? Now, you have to write here, across, uh, do we have copies of the paper? One copy, please. You have to write here whether you accept the offer or not. And you have all the possible options, assuming that you cannot split errors. You can either uh, be proposed that you get zero and the other person gets 10, that's the first proposal, or the other propo person proposes nine for him or her and one for you, or eight, two, and so on and so forth. The first quantity is what that other person gets. The second quantity is what is given to you. And you, some of those offers you may accept and others may reject. You can mark with a cross what you accept and what you reject. And once you have done that, you just fold the paper and write not your name because this is anonymous, but you write something. Okay? You write something that will allow you to recognize yourself in a while. Okay? So remember, first question, the offer you make. Other question, what do you accept and what do you reject? Fold, name, and then please pass everything to the person in this row, okay? In this column of chairs, and I will pick those things up, okay? Everybody's happy with this? Questions, anyone? Please. In the second case, yeah? it is different, for example, I know I have nothing, and I do have something. Yep. No. It's money that comes from heaven. Of course. Okay, so you, if you get those things and put them in a pile there. Okay. Okay, so we can now start a formal five minutes presentation, which is what Mara told me. So I show this because that's where we work. Some of you know, bloody hell. Some of you know this building. This is the Barcelona Biomedical Research Park. Mara works in the, somewhere. I work in the fourth floor. And yes, uh, we have uh, access to the beach. And interestingly, there's a gym here, there's an animal facility, but the interesting part is the gym. The gym has five swimming pools. Two of them have marine water. But if you don't feel like doing research, what you do is you go to the gym, and then through the tunnels below the road, you get out to the beach through these doors here. Okay? The point I'm showing this is that uh, we tend to do all our work in the rainy winter's day, days, and the rest we go and have fun in the beach. And whenever we do work, myself, there's like 1,400 people that they do very different kinds of work. 
Myself, I do work not in neuroscience, neither in economics. So I'm, I'm a bluff. I shouldn't be here. But I, I am here anyway because there's also that you can, something that you can do. And the message is that you can also add genomics into this. If you have not been hiding in a cave for the last 15 years, you know that we have this expression in Spanish, there's genomics even in the soup. This, this is some, something that appears everywhere. And neuroeconomics has become kind of linked uh, with genomics in a way, with, with good reason. And the reason is that we want answers to the questions that these guys tackled many years ago. You know these people. And this is just a tiny fraction 